Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're talking about how to source free IDPG transistors. Now this is primarily TO247 uh, package and also some that are bigger. So I'm going to walk through my pile of IDPGs that I have salvaged from induction heaters, solar inverters and other kind of cheap power electronics that is become very common among normal households and that we are now seeing being thrown out in big quantities. And it is especially relevant here in 2022 where we see very steep prices if we can even get parts delivered from the manufacturers. So it's really worth looking on where to find these parts and if you're lucky for free. Here I have a whole box of salvaged IDPTs. And um, I just want to show a quick way of salvaging these. As you can see, they do have shorter leads than normal. And that is why, or oh, that is caused by the way I salvage it. That if I get by somewhere where I have a board like this and I do not have time to take it with me, or it's mounted in some kind of enclosure and I can choose to leave it or just get the switches, then I will just unscrew the switches, pull them very hard up and then wriggle them from side to side and make sure that you break the legs down against the PCB. So that's a very quick way of salvaging an IDPG and only lose something like 3 to 4 millimeters of leg length. So that's uh, one of the downsides to doing it this way, but saves a lot of time from desoldering them. So well, let's just uh, pull the pile out and uh, I will sort them out and let's talk about the ratings afterwards. Most of the switches have been sorted out. It's a good mix of ITPTs and MOSFETs and we also have a stack of full bridge rectifiers, ultra-fast diodes, and Schottky diodes. So it's a bit of a mix taking out of all these solar inverters, induction stoves, and welding inverters. So let's look at the list here of all the different parts. Now, building Tesla coil inverters, there is two part numbers here that really jump into my eyes, and that is the 40N60 and the 60N60 IGPTs. These are very popular and perform very well in smaller Tesla coils up to some 300 amp primary circuit current. So it's not just the voltage rating and the peak current rating that's interesting here, but also the saturation voltage and the total amount of loss, switching losses in the switch. We would of course want the saturation voltage or the on resistance on a MOSFET to be as low as possible and as well for the switching losses, which is directly derived from this and the switching current. As the switching energies is very much higher in soft switching a higher current than these they are spec for for hard switching. So if we want to check out some of the other IGPTs that we found here, we can see that something like the K40 could be interesting for a higher voltage, so using three-phase 400 volt AC could be interesting. Has some good uh, parameters, maybe a bit high on the switching losses side. But uh, if we go entirely for the switching losses, we can see there are really not that many good alternatives to the 40 and 60 and 60 and 60. What we have here, 1.55 millijoule, that is only rated for 30 amp and 60 amp peak current, so that is no good. And there is a lot of those. So I can uh, only say I'm glad that I have a total of 30 of the 40 and 60 and 6 60 and 60s. All the others, uh, unfortunately, a bit too few of them. But one interesting part I do find is something like this. The G4 PC50, which has a very high peak rating, very low saturation voltage. Very interesting part. Just a shame I only have two of those. And then again, this high voltage IDPT, very interesting part, but very high saturation voltage, probably has a lot of losses, but can take some really high voltages, but not really practical because 
we don't really see operating primary circuit voltages in this range. And then of course we also have the um, smaller up here, but again, too low peak current. So I think uh, the um, thing to take away from this is if you find something, you can get a lot of good parts, but looking for the good old well-known 40 and 60 and 60 parts, well, if you find something like that with that, just take it. All the other parts here will work, but it will to some extent be worse and you might risk exploding it because it simply has worse characteristics. So I really hope you enjoyed this video on where to find some parts and what kind of parts you can find in normal household items like induction stoves, modern uh, microwave oven inverters, welding machines and yeah, solar inverters, battery car chargers, um, all sorts of power electronics that we are starting to see in normal households and therefore also see discarded units ending up in the junkyards now. So, thank you for watching and until next time, see ya.